Put it simply, slag is a byproduct of steel production coming from the process of separating or refining metal from its ore. Because of its definition, many people may associate slag with waste or rubbish and basically unusable. Indeed, this so-called waste leftover is a surprisingly valuable material for construction, especially cement production. But imagine if you're a steel worker, a metal supervisor, or a production manager who is moving back and forth under a super hot heat blast furnace or electric arc furnace just struggling day and night to remove all the redundant slags from casting equipment or torpedo cars and so on. I bet that you'll have no liking for slag anymore, no matter how amazing the benefits that it brings. Tire protection chains are manufactured from a special mesh of high wear resistant but flexible chrome, manganese and molybdenum alloy steel links. The mesh protects both the sidewalls and the tread of the expensive tires from wear and tear. On the other hand, tire protection chains are flexible enough to take the shape of the tire to ensure flawless operation. In addition, this flexibility prevents potential clogging of the chains that could affect the handling of the loader. No wonder that slag removal is hard and dangerous work. Therefore, without a proper tool that fits your specific purposes, the harmful impact can be caused by unintended misuse as a consequence. Transporting molten slag by train is a safe and effective method because the train has its own metal wheel system and rails to operate. The slag is usually transported in high volume hopper wagons with pneumatic control of side dampers of the falls and fawns type. This allows worker to unload the load quickly and efficiently. It is possible to load more than 50 tons of cargo into a single wagon. Slag pot carriers are designed for continuous operation in the harsh environment, normally found in smelters and steel mills. Specialized design, utilizing standard and vendor components, ensures a machine that is ideal for the job, can be easily maintained, and has a reliable, ready source of parts and service supports. Press Corporation is the world's leading manufacturer of slag pot carriers with hundreds of units in operation throughout the world in the steel, non-ferrous, and ferroalloy industries. Crest slag pot carriers are available in a wide range of models and capacities, 
up to 250 tons, 227 tons, handling slag pots up to 1589 Q445QM. Using positive hydraulic control, the pot is tipped to pour molten slag into pits for cooling and processing. The Crest desculling system speeds removal of skulls without damage to the pot or carrier. Coke oven plants are large and expensive. They take coal of certain types and heat it in chambers at temperatures in excess of 1000 degrees centigrade in the absence of air. This means the product does not combust. Chemicals and water are driven off leaving a mass of carbon with a little ash. This is pushed out of the chamber, quenched with water and, when dry, sent for use, often to blast furnaces, where it provides the fuel for heat and the reft-deducing gas, carbon monoxide, which removes the oxygen from iron ore leaving iron and slag. Poquito, poquito. In the traditional CWQ coke wet quenching process, the red hot coke which is pushed from the coke oven is cooled by spraying water on the hot coke. The water used for cooling is vaporized and released into the atmosphere. An issue with this conventional system is the energy loss when the thermal energy of the red hot coke is converted into the steam which is vaporized and released, unused. Another drawback is that the CWQ process also produces airborne coke dust, and hence the CWQ process is associated with high CO2 emissions and thermal energy loss. Coke is produced by igniting bituminous coal under reduced oxygen conditions in oven batteries, specially designed for this process. The coking process generates the following main volatiles as byproducts coke oven gas, tar, ammonium sulfate, benzol, toluol, and naphtha. A coke battery is made up of multiple ovens. Coal is crushed and blended prior to being charged in a coke oven. A Larry car charges the individual oven with the blended coal. In the coke oven, the coal is heated to 18F for up to 18 hours. During that time, the volatiles of the coal are driven into the off-gas and a pure carbon form called coke remains. The coke, when exposed to oxygen, will immediately ignite and begin to burn. When the coke is pushed from the oven into a rail car, it is quickly quenched to cool the coke and stop the burning process. The cooled coke is then dumped onto a coal wharf where it is taken to a facility to be screened and sized prior to being charged into the blast furnace.